Hi everybody, we just arrived at YouTube Fan Fest Creator Camp Manila here at the Blue Leaf Las Filipinas, uh, very close to the City of Dreams. I'm with my brother Great Ancheta and if you haven't checked out his YouTube channel yet, it's planetgreat.com. Bro, I think it's your first time for a YouTube uh, Creator Camp. Yes, my very first time. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> so the very first time this creator camp happened was actually at this same venue maybe two or three years ago I was there for that and now we're gonna check out this 2019 version I'm so impressed, the energy, the vibe, it's so happening so early in the morning, it's not even 10 a.m. yet. So let's check out a few of these sponsors. Okay, maybe later. Maybe later. Chicken okay. okay, it looks like we have some breakfast served. Uh, looks like a toast. What is this? Grilled cheese. Grilled cheese. Grilled cheese. Good morning, what's up? What's up? Welcome to YouTube Fan Fest Creator Camp 2019. My name is Enrique Kroon I'm a strategic partner manager on the YouTube Creator and Artist Development team. And I'm so happy to see so many familiar and brand new faces on the stage today. Astounding when you think about this, almost a third of the entire internet population is coming to YouTube. This is almost 18 times the entire population of the Philippines. So what are people doing on YouTube every day? They're watching one billion hours of YouTube. If you want to contextualize this a little bit, if you wanted to watch a billion hours, you'd have to start watching 100,000 years ago, and you'd still be watching videos today. So what about the Philippines? What's happening with our growth here? Well, we know that 71% of people in the Philippines are now online. And out of that 71%, 85% of folks are watching YouTube. We're seeing twice as much content getting uploaded to the platform by creators like you every single day. What's most exciting for me though about the Philippines is this slide right here. When I joined YouTube five years ago, we watched India start to take off. The next year we saw Thailand take off. Then we saw Vietnam. Last year we saw Indonesia really grow. And I kept asking myself and my team here when the Philippines was gonna to start to take off. Well, I think we finally started to see that today. We have over 750 channels now that are silver button channels. These are channels with over 100,000 subscribers. Even more impressive, over the last year we've seen our gold button channels grow by 4x. These are channels that have over a million subscribers. It's a really amazing time to be a creator. And if you put all of this together, the Philippines is now officially one of our fastest growing markets. Right? Let's hear it. When it comes to authenticity, it's important to focus on your passions and be true to yourself. Only then can you build a connection with your audience who loves you for you. You have to be dedicated to learn as much as you can. 
Study your analytics. Understand what they mean and commit to realistic targets and goals. It's okay if you don't get it right from the, the beginning either. It's all about experimenting to understand what works best. You can do this by trying different video formats and analyzing how they perform. Ask poll questions to your fans in the Cars and Community tab to see what they want. And use google.com slash trends to see what's popular that you can create content about. Like Lefty said, my, my apologies. So, um, like Lefty said, your creator friends are one of the most important parts of being a YouTuber. So expand your network today. Meet as many people as you can. Cross promote each other on social media and rely on each other to grow together. So what are those four tips again? Start developing your unique story today by being authentic, dedicated, experimenting thoughtfully, and collaborating. So, sana mahalin ko nang medyo okay na malakpang. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, I hope you are into this song that I'm singing. It's a cover song. It's called All or Nothing by Old Town. Positive impact on their lives. 
also think about yourself because you know the content that you're creating is coming from you as well, and it's actually really mainly coming from you. So you have just recently, I kind of had this um, break or uh, hiatus off uh, online, and I needed it, and that's actually I, I, I realized at the end of the day, oh, what motivates me to continue further is actually my happiness and my vision for my audience for the Isn't that so important just to disconnect? Remember that you need to take care of yourself first. And it's okay to step back, remember what you want to do, and then keep going. So you went from corporate worker to beauty creator. Yes, I was an analyst. That was my first job. Wow. And what's it like now? Do you enjoy it a lot more? Do you enjoy your job a lot more now? Oh, for sure. <laughs> not not waking up or waking up without having an alarm is the best thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Yes, do it. 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 Do Dancers, one of them is a massive fan for me. Woo! Help me, help me. Who else? Yeah. Chachi. Chachi and Zombies. Yeah! So she's been like a fan of Chachi stuff, like since she was a kid. Wow. And then she's like a fan girl before. Fan girl now, too. She met, she met her, then she was like crazy about it. And now she, uh, Chachi follows her now. Well, look at that! From fans to friends, guys. I got you. Next time you're gonna have that, you all. Oh! Matt, who's your YouTube like, inspiration? Um, I mean, I. Uh... I have a lot of different ones. For me, the, the first person that really got me to take YouTube seriously was Dominic Beatrix. I mean, guys, the Beatrix, uh, my Filipino brother, and, um,. I was, like a lot of you guys said, I was doing YouTube as a hobby, I just loved to dance, I was making dance videos for fun, and you know, me and him would have like these long talks where we'd be talking about the dance world and the difficulties, and he was like, why don't you just focus on YouTube, like you love choreographing and making videos, and I never really even thought about it until I saw his channel, I saw how he was doing things, and it really inspired me to be like, oh, it doesn't just have to be only dance videos, like you can do challenges with dance, you can teach other people to dance, you can collaborate with People like Marks and Diana from across the world, there's so many things that you can do outside of just your bedroom or your studio or whatever it is that you're living into when you first start. You know? yeah, and you would learn a lot from everyone you collaborate with as well, right? Because everyone is so different. Yeah, for sure. What do you think is the biggest thing you've learned from someone you collaborated with? Um, I, I think the, the most important thing, and, and most of these people can probably attest to this too, is that when you do decide that YouTube is a career and it's not just a hobby and it's something that you really want to do, it is a lot of hard work and a lot of consistency. Like for me, the first, I've been on YouTube for 10 years now, and the first five years it was like, oh, if I'm in LA, if I'm teaching a class, cool, I'll film it and I'll put it online. But when I stopped dancing professionally and I wanted YouTube to be my main focus, I was like, okay, if I don't have a class this week, like I need to find another way to make content or I need to reach out to people to collaborate so that I'm posting consistently and constantly pushing myself and not just waiting for opportunities to come to me because that's the amazing thing about YouTube is you create opportunities by putting yourself out there, by putting your work out there. But you have to keep doing that. It's not enough to just post one video and then sit back and wait for the opportunities to come to you. Mm, remember that. Yes, I hear applause from my audience. They all Viral video with Lovato Avocado. Yeah, how did that happen? How did you collaborate? Uh, Lovato? Uh huh. Yeah, so. Yeah, we just DM, DM them, like, you know, let's, let's link up. So yeah. easy. That's how you reach out to people right now. DM. DM. Yeah, we did like, the Switch It Up challenge and then it went viral and then, uh, yeah, we just linked up. And that's how easy it is. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated. Don't overthink it. If you have someone you want to collaborate with and you don't know them yet, that's okay. Just DM them. Or, you know, if they're here today, come and say hi. You never know how many new friends and new collaborators you can make. I'd like us all to take a step back and realize two things. One, and this is for both the audience and you guys, with great reach comes great responsibility. 
Everyone here has an audience that looks up to them for inspiration, information, and entertainment. So ask yourself, who is watching me? And am I setting a good example for them? So that's the first thing. The second thing is, success on YouTube goes beyond the numbers. Every creator can, has, can have a positive impact in their community, and giving back to people is one of the most rewarding things that you can do. As a YouTube creator, inspiration and gratitude is a two-way street between you and your audience. So yes, your platform for good is something that is very rewarding in the short run, but having a positive impact on your community is one of the best ways to stay relevant and to make really meaningful fan and brand relationships moving forward. I'm going to move a little closer. So, let's just start with a roundtable introduction. So please keep the microphone close to you and tell us your overall story. Tell us who you are, what your channel's about, and anything else you want to say. Good morning everyone. My name is Joel Minas and I am an ice skater and I do ice skating videos on my channel. And I also cosplay as well. Good job, Joel. And he was a next up finalist. Yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Addie Amore and I make videos on fashion, beauty, lifestyle and I also do inspirational type content. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Lee. I'm a full-time YouTuber and that is makeup artist. <laughs> and I'm one of the fellow creators for Twitch. I'm just exude confidence and I'm 
Have you ever collaborated with them? Not yet, I hope so. <laughs> we, can, we can make a few calls and, and see what we can do about that. So, if you were to collaborate with them, what would be like your dream collaboration? What would you want to do? Uh -huh. Maybe um, uh, similar to uh, what he does before. So it's very interactive, right? That two-way stream between the creator and the audience is, is alive and well with the Lord of the so. Okay, so this one's for all of you. Um, when along your creator journey did you realize that you could have a positive impact on people? Was it a specific moment? Was it a specific video? Was it a specific comment? What made you realize that you were actually having a positive impact on people? Sure. Um, so, me personally, I, I just do ice skating videos, right? And I, I, the moment where I think that I need to create a positive, a positive change was when I saw the comments. See, uh, in my mind, I was just creating ice skating videos, but I didn't know that there were people that were motivated or inspired to do ice skating themselves or to start ice skating or uh, uh, to inspire them to not just ice skating but uh, to just pursue their passions in life. And that, that moment kind of hit me that this platform that we have, we might be used to make beauty, music, dance, whatever, but we have the ability to uh, impact people, to influence them more than what we're creating. And so um, that's what I just about. Thank you. Um, I think for me, it was one time where I met these two girls in a mall, and I was probably 15 years old, so if you can imagine, this super nene child is walking in a mall, trying to get her shopping done. Tapos biglang may nag-approach sa akin, sabi niya, Ate Janina, pwede mo picture, sabi ko, bakit ate, bata pa ako. And then they said, I think, they said, I think, talk about how they felt, they said that I inspired them. To me, that was such a weird experience because I wasn't even making inspirational content yet. I was just being there and being present and showing up. And to them, that made a huge difference already. Um, I guess just to making a choice to stand up in a space that was at that time very unsaturated. Um, so I guess that was the first time that I realized that what I had, I will say this, but what I had was not just a pedestal, but a platform. Um, I feel like there's a difference because when you look at a pedestal, it's alam niyo ba yung na napanod niyo ba yung Hercules? Yung pag may may base siya on a pedestal. It's like a pedestal kasi you only think about yourself. How much what will I gain from this? You know what, how much money can I earn from this? Yeah, shiny things. You look at the shiny things. But when I realized that this was a platform, that's when everything changed. When I realized that. Well, first of all, I felt very unqualified to be, you know, inspiring others. But I realized that regardless of whether I stand on the platform or not, the platform form will still be there. So might as well use it for good. And that's when I kind of push myself. Okay, if they feel confident, if I inspire them to be more confident just by being present and showing up, what if I actually made tangible? Like, what if? What if I? was intentional of doing, of making a change and inspiring others, and I think that was the very important for me. Great, yeah, I mean, you, great answer, first of all. Um, but let's remember, you know, when you see that view count, when you see subscriber count, it's easy to feel detached because it's just a number, it's just a number on the screen. But when you meet those people in real life, you actually start to really see what type of impact you have on them. So if you haven't had an experience meeting someone in real life um, that actually watches you, I'm yeah, sure you'll see that you all right. really do have influence and a responsibility to set a good example. Yeah, so any other people, um, the moment you realize that you could have the platform for good. Well, similar story with Janina, I also didn't put up my channel to inspire. It was really something for me and then it turned into something for everyone else. So the moment that I realized that I really could make an impact was when... No, I forgot. <laughs> so this was when 
I put out, uh, uh, I tried to diversify my content. So I put out a uh, Get Ready With Me type of video. And I, I've never done it before because, I don't know, it's just, I, I tried to put a wall between me and what I put out. Because you have to limit that also sometimes. But for this particular video, I thought, you know what? It might be a good idea to just let people in just a little more. So I put out uh, Get Ready With Me type of videos. I was putting on makeup and then I was just talking about the most random things. And when I did that, I noticed that the comments on that video changed. All the responses I would usually get are, oh, your lipstick's so nice, or where did you get this, blah, blah. It's usually surface text comments like that. But when I put out this video, the comments just became deeper. Like, I had no idea this is what you go through. I can't believe we're experiencing the same thing in life. Um, thank you for opening up about this because this is also something I'm going through. So when I received those comments, and then I of course responded to all of them, that for me made me realize that, yeah, so this platform actually can reach people and it can start these types of deep conversations. And up until now, I am still talking to those subscribers, the ones who even messaged me like directly about it, and then they ask for advice, and then they tell me their stories, and that's also when I realized that my subscribers are also very inspiring. So it's not just me inspiring them, he inspired me also. You stole one of my- Okay, lunch is served. I got a kind of like a grilled meatballs with onions, with rice, uh, salad, and pasta. Well, 
happy for me, right? Yes, I'm happy for you. Sino dito introvert kayo? Siyempre, hindi nga kayo kayo magkakasabi. Because it is scary. Know that courage isn't erasing your fear, but courage is facing your fear. Ako ay manunay kung saan. Baka nakas people, maybe may bagong intro, hindi na hello hello hello, pero what's up, paper cut. And maybe producing, I'm producing content that a bunch of my old subscribers wouldn't really appreciate anymore. But, I'm not very many people sa lang anymore. The man you see up here on stage knows who he is. He has involved as a first one and so has his content. That's me, I'm sorry. Third person, come on. Come on, please, come on now. Come on, come on, come on. Today I put out content that's inspirational, that's real, that's authentic, and sometimes it's better being an onion from RNA and I'm saying like parang. But does everybody know what I produce? Not really. But I've learned that you can't please everyone. And that's okay. But as long as the content you create is fueling your passion and your desire to make content that inspires yourself as well as inspires others, then you're in the right place. So for me, I learned that it's important to take a step back, to listen to the right voices, and to create from the heart. And you'll be all right. Just like the last panel, start thinking about your questions and for the last 10 minutes, we'll form a queue right there. So maybe this question is for like the first half of you guys here. So tell us a little bit about your fan community and, and what you call them and what are they like? Okay, you. <laughs> uh, I, you too. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I call my, or my viewers are self-proclaimed wasabians. And, uh, what was the question? <laughs> what, what are your fans like? Oh, they're really cool. They're usually uh, really nice. And uh, they're everywhere. I've been a lot of places, and everywhere I go, I've met at least one with Avian, so it's really cool. They're, they're taking over. Have, have you met a couple here in the Philippines? Uh, I think. The, are there any out here? Any with out here? There we go. There we go. Now's your chance to ask them a couple of questions. But yeah, thank you so much. Anyone else want to tell us about their fans, if they have a special name for their community? Hi, everybody. Uh -huh. They are composed of super little kids and sometimes young professionals. And you? Okay. <laughs> Anybody else want to talk about their fan community or send a message to their fans right now? Everybody seems to be looking at Pamela Swing. I don't know why. Uh, 
part lang sila, sumali lang sila sa palaro namin. And ngayon, ambassadors na namin sila. Awesome. So just to quickly add on to that, you know, as you may remember, I started working with Nino when he got selected as the next up finalist. And all throughout my time working together with him, his channel has always been about that community of street ballers. It's never been about him, it's never been about his star, it's been about the entire community. And I think that's why he's made it up onto the fan fest stage this year. Actually, uh, um, I have one more thing. Uh... Ah, guys, si Enrique talaga yung turo sa akin ng basketball. Yeah, he was the one, he's the one. Thank you. Does anyone else have any fun memories about meeting their fans in real life that they want to share? Anything at all? It's always fun. Because it's always someone new, you know? And it's amazing to just meet, like, the people who support you and the people who watch your stuff. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And it's cool when like they meet you. You usually, I don't know about you guys, but I always match their excitement. So if somebody's like, oh, hey, I'm like, oh, we have a speech. But sometimes they're like, ah! And I'm like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> You'll get a lot of that this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so I want some of you guys to just take us back to the beginning. Do you remember what it's like getting your first subscriber, first 1,000 subscribers, and, and does anyone want to just reminisce on those beginning times? Um, well, for me, uh, it started with me just doing what I love to do, which is like singing and dancing. So I started YouTube years ago. I was so young, and my dad actually was the one who took videos of me, and he posted them on YouTube without my permission. <laughs> And then he started showing me that, you know, people started watching me and really, like, loving what I was doing. So, you know, it just really felt um, nice that at a young age that, you know, people supported me and were, were um, seeing me and, and trying to push me to keep going with what I love to do at such a young age. And here I am now, so I think I'm, I'm sure your dad is so proud of you. Ken. Ken, let's just continue on with you, uh, since you gave such a good answer. Um, so do you ever take your fan suggestions and directly incorporate it into your videos? Yeah, all the time. Uh, I really like to look at um, what they say during comments, because of course we make content for them to watch, and so their perspective is not always the same as what you give out. And so uh, like, I listen to their suggestions, like, um, sometimes they want me to collab with certain people like us, like we've done a couple collabs too, I collab with Viva as well. Um, as well as like what they want to see more, whether they like seeing singing videos more, or dance videos more, or just vlogs in general, just normal life. Um, just really listening to what they say because, you know, it's for them and their viewers. Anyone else want to add to that? Anything else that they learn from their audience and incorporate into their videos? Fine. Ako talaga yung nakasalita sa heart. Fine, I have to talk. But I think it's a balance of what I want and what we want to see. Because, you know, ako naman yung creator, so I feel like my content should, should always inspire me. And my content should always be something that I'm very passionate about. But it's always a balance of what I want and what the audience wants as well. Because, again, they're the viewers. And it pays that if you listen to your audience. I mean, not to the point that they get to I mean, manipulate you and manipulate your thoughts and your actions because at the end of the day, we have our own identity and we are all but it's always a balance of what you want and what you want. That's music to my ears. Thank you so much. Like, what I, what I tell all of my creators is that, and I literally use this line over and over again, you want to live in the middle ground between what you love to create and what your audience wants to see. And living in that middle ground doesn't mean doing the same thing over and over again. It means constantly listening to them, constantly learning from them, but matching that information with whatever your passions are. So your audience, the relationship you have with them is a living, breathing, growing thing. So always pay attention to them and always make sure that you're also listening to yourself. Okay. So let's pass it on to Jamil at the end over there. So you guys, as we said, were our breakout stars in 2018 and you got to over a million subs in about five months or less. So what do you think is one thing that you did really well that caused you guys to grow so fast? So, ano, um, siguro, kaya 
kaya kami nagpapatuloy dito sa YouTube is parang ito talaga yung gusto namin and feeling ko is ito talaga ang nagpigala. So parang gusto lang namin is magpasaya na magpasaya lang yung sinasabi namin and parang passion talaga namin sa YouTube. Ako ano lang, tapang trip lang. Medyo ako lang. Simula bata ako talaga ako, ganda na talaga ako ako nito. And lagi na papakainda ng teacher, yun ang mga nakakatanda. So habang tumatagal, nung na-discover ko yung pinibidyo ko ng sarili ko sa mga katawa, dami na dami ako naisip ko. Why not gamitin ko itong pakulitan, inodutubay, hindi yung napapakainitan ako, hindi yung nasasaway ako, hindi yung ganit. So, inisip ko na kapag kailangan ko sa magandang paraan ko, marami akong may inspire, marami akong papasaya, marami akong matutulungan ng mga depressed na tao na kinakailangan ng iwan ng tao. Kaya, na-discover ko itong mga, itong YouTube na to, na may mga creator ako kong hilala, nagpagawa na ko ng mga lesson, diba? Na, ito na, kami naman yung nagtuturo sa inyo, kami na yung nagiging, kumbaga, kami na yung makikita yung lesson, na kapag nagkamali ka, may iba kami tama. Matututo kayo sa amin. So, ayun yung nakakatawang part sa YouTube. For you guys, enjoy nyo lang yung ginagawa nyo. Kasi pag nakita ng viewers nyo na nag-enjoy kayo, mag-enjoy na rin sila. Yun lang. Yun lang talaga. Saka, do what you love. Yes. Ako naman, tip ko sa inyo, don't give up. Kunyari ang channel nyo, hindi na nag-grow. Tuloy-tuloy nyo lang. And also, one last thing is, don't think of the money first. Think of your passion. I think it's just really knowing that it'll take time and you just really need to have the patience because a lot of people expect that once you have one viral video, like you know, you know, you know, but you really just have to work hard for what you're doing. And just love what you're doing, what they said. Yeah, and because it takes so much time, um, just try to keep your content like super fresh and what you really love to do. Because at the same time, it's like it takes forever. Like you need to persevere and not get bored yourself. Um, so like keep it fresh and like do different things on YouTube or not the same thing all the time, or else you'll just tire yourself out. I guess um, this is just a tip for everyone to just stop comparing yourself to stop comparing yourself to other creators because their um, path is not the same with ours or like magkakaiba tayo ng you know pacing and that doesn't mean na may nauna lang sa'yo you're not gonna grow anymore so just keep on doing content but gonna be love and so super helpful if you're very consistent because it helps a lot you know the analytics and all so it helps if you're very consistent want to do for me it's okay and never stop and never compare yourself to other to other creators because okay when i'm dying and pacing and all i remember ray tuned in to a youtube live stream that me and my former filipino partner manager susan did like two years ago she wasn't big enough to work with a partner manager yet but i remember when i first started working with her she mentioned and remembered some of the things that we talked about in that live stream like a year ago so really when i say that ray is super driven and dedicated and is a young entrepreneur she's done that like really to, to the best of her abilities She's paying attention to the stats and uses those stats to further develop that relationship with her audience. So, great job. Um, other tips for the audience here today? Um, yeah, uh, uh, I agree with the consistency is very important. And another thing is uh, take inspiration from creators you admire or that you watch. And that doesn't mean copy them, but if there's like a popular trend or something on YouTube, you can do that trend. But make sure not to do it like everybody else. Do it how you would do it. Make it more in your style. And it usually does better. They can see that it's more genuine. For sure. Other tips? Check it out. Okay. All right, we can, we can open it up to... Surprise.